Hello everybody, welcome to another video. A very different video for me because I will be reviewing this camera. Viafo sent me this, the Viafo Mini Dash Cam A119 Mini 2. Now I could do an unboxing video, there's loads of them on YouTube, unboxing it and then showing you all the specs and all of this sort of stuff, but I'm not going to do that. Oh no, I'm going to stick this in my car which will take all of about two minutes because it is so simple to install. And then we're going to go and do a little trip around London, we're going to go and see some sights. It's a little bit like a Monopoly board though, I've got to say, we're going to be driving around to all these places that's on a Monopoly board, or a few of them, probably about 9 or 10 of them I think it is. But getting back to the camera just for a second, I have got some discount codes for you that they've kindly given me so you can get some percentages off if you want to buy this. And personally, you know that I use this type of camera myself. Viafo is the best for me. I've had loads of cameras that that don't even come close to this. And if you look on YouTube, so many other dash cameras use this make of camera. The guys that use their own material, or mostly use their own material, the Essex Bad Driving, you've got the dash cam hole, uh, the guy in Bristol, we all use the Viafo cameras. And there's a reason for it. They never let you down. I've had cameras where you come back home, put them on the computer, and it hasn't recorded a sausage. And it's also lasted longer than all the other dash cams I've had put together. Now what you're looking at at the moment is the Amazon website, obviously. It's 159 quid on there, but you, there you can see there's a voucher there for 20 quid. And you also get 7% off of that by using the codes that I'm going to give you. And you guys that are in America, you get an even better deal. I'll show you that in a second though. Now you can buy this straight from Viafo if you wanted to. There it is on their website, 102 quid. They've obviously got a little bit of a special going on there as well. Saving of 15 pounds. It's up to you where you get it from, I guess. But what I will say is, check them all because the deals always change. From time to time I've looked at this and the, the prices have varied quite a bit. So here's your deal for the Amazon. I will put this all in the description down below so you don't have to uh, copy this off the screen. You get a 7% if you use that code there. And you guys in America get 30% off if you go to Amazon, the American website. So with all that done and dusted now, let's start the proper review and see what the camera can do. Recording started. Well, first off, my one doesn't talk to me like that. It doesn't tell me I'm recording and you can actually say save video and it will save the video. So you don't even have to touch it. We're starting this here in Cricklewood. Yes, and I know there is no sights in Cricklewood that you really want to see. It's just that we was in this industrial estate and I wanted to show you the colors of all the signs outside the shop to, just to show how good this camera is. Now I'm using this camera without a filter. You can buy filters to, for this camera and I would always recommend buying a filter, especially when it's sunny, it stops the glare. So this is, this is without a filter and look at them colours that are, I know you're not buying it to do colours on the buildings and stuff like that, you're looking at buying a dash cam to, to have a permanent eyewitness to something that's happened on the road but it does help if everything is clear now don't turn off yet I am not going to drive through Cricklewood okay I, I do have to drive through Cricklewood but you don't have to see it I will jump straight to uh, Marble Arch because this road out here the A5 leads to Marble Arch but it's a long way and it's a lot of traffic and nothing really happens so um, bear with me we will get there now I've had this camera quite a long time we've you'll see down there the time three minutes to eight it's actually three minutes to nine that's how long I've had the camera with the clocks changed in this, in this country because we are waiting for better deals it also does kilometers down there it does do miles I forgot to actually change it to miles so that's my bad but I'm going to cover that up because 
You don't want to see my speed, do you? I'm not speeding. Now, just to prove to you that I'm not speeding, this is a 30 miles an hour road. And up here you'll see a green sign with a thank you underneath it. I'm sure if I was speeding, it wouldn't be saying thank you. So as I said, we're in Cricklewood at the moment. That's North London. Um, and there isn't anything to see around here. There really isn't. It's just roads like this leading straight into London, into more central London where all the sites are. So we'll skip and we'll go into central London. We'll have a bit of background music as well as we come into Marble Arch. Now I'm not an official tour guide, so I, I will miss things. Bear with me. But over there to the left hand side, underneath that second traffic light there, that's Marble Arch, but unfortunately, it's covered up. They're obviously uh, doing a bit of maintenance on it. Now from time to time in this video, you'll see some people doing some stupid things, like that bike there, but I will not mention it. Okay, I will keep quiet on people doing things wrong, sort of anyway. I will try to keep it down as much as I can. Now down there is Oxford Street. That's on the Monopoly board. There's our first one. Why have you got your hand out the window, mate? And it cuts across me. So, we're on Park Lane. That's also on the Monopoly board. Didn't take us long to get number two, did it? Now, over to our right is High Park. Massive, great big park. Huge. Over to our left is Aston Martin dealership there. Down this road, it's pretty much dealerships and hotels. And I don't mean basic hotels, we are talking celebrity ones, the ones that all the celebs go to and not the B list of celebrities. You need money, proper money down here. Like the Grosvenor House Hotel, just over to the left hand side now. Quite expensive, they do quite a lot of premiership presentation things there for the football. They even do the darts ones in there. And over to the left hand side, we've got an SO garage and a Londis. See what I mean? Upper class stuff down here. You will also notice it's three lanes of traffic plus a bus lane and it's 20 miles an hour. It's ridiculous. How slow do you want London to go? 20 miles an hour on this sort of size road is just madness for me anyway. You don't get people crossing the road here. Not, not willy-nilly anyway. So what is the point? Okay, you got the Dorchester Hotel there to the left hand side. Right where that ball is. Unfortunately, you can't see it because it's down that little road there to the left hand side of it where that kid is now So if I've missed things let us know in the comments down below if I've made a mistake Let us know in the comments down below So just coming up on the left hand side, we've got the London Hilton Hotel. Now over to the right hand side, we have a horse's head. And no, I haven't been watching The Godfather. There really is a horse's head over there. I don't know too much about it. So if someone wants to educate me in the comments down below, please feel free to do so. On that subject, mind you, not anything else. So now we're coming into High Park Corner. That big statue in front of us is the Wellington Arch. And as we drive around this corner here, that big C on the floor means you have to pay congestion charge if you drive down this road. Over to the left hand side, just behind that FedEx van, is the Hard Rock Cafe. Watch out, roadworks reported on the road ahead.
Now over to our right is Green Park and behind Green Park is Clarence House where the King lives. He still lives in Clarence House, the King. By all accounts he still lives there because he's waiting for Buckingham Palace to be refurbished before he moves in there with his Queen. Now a little bit further ahead there to the left hand side you'll see the Japanese Embassy. You'll see the flag just flying there. And the road we're on at the moment is Piccadilly, another one that's on the Monopoly board. And the area to our left is called Mayfair, another one that's on the Monopoly board as well. So just coming up on the right hand side is the famous Ritz, the Ritz Hotel. Everybody knows that one, don't they? Now coming up on the left hand side is Old Bond Street which in a Monopoly game is just called Bond Street. So coming up on the left hand side we have the Royal Academy of Arts and on the left Fulton and Masons.
Now coming up, if we were turning left, we would be turning into Regent Street, but we're not turning left, we're going right. So that's another one off the Monopoly board. So there'll be a few little arrows on the screen in a little while. Just to show you something, you will have to be quick because they're not there for very long. So at the moment, we're in Piccadilly Circus. The only thing that's missing are the clowns. So we'll get back on track now, shall we? Down there is Shaftesbury Avenue, where pretty much most of London theatres are down there. So as we come round this bend here, straight in front of us there is Leicester Square, another one that's on the Monopoly board. But we're not going down there because it's not very friendly for traffic down there. So just over there to the left hand side we have another theatre, the Theatre Royal Haymarket. So when we get down to the bottom here I have this brainwave, instead of turning left I want to turn right. Instead of going to Trafalgar Square I was thinking of going to take you right and go towards Buckingham Palace and try and get to see Buckingham Palace because Buckingham Palace is really hard to get to from certain areas now. They blocked the road off, going straight down the mall, and you can't get to it. So I decided to go right towards Buckingham Palace. Well, we're about to enter Pall Mall when we see this cyclist. He actually jumped. He's gone through a red light, he's on his phone, he's paying that little attention to the road that he actually jumped when I bibbed him to let him know that I was there. So we're on Pall Mall at the moment, another one off the Monopoly board. I'm not allowed to say anything about what he just done because apparently I'm a bully. So further down this road you can turn left and go into Buckingham Palace that way. Sometimes it's open, sometimes it's not. But as we get a little bit further, or closer to it I should say, I see lots of traffic. And I'm not prepared to wait in the traffic, so there's no one behind me close enough to get in my way, or me get in their way, so I do a U-turn. That's the closest thing that was to me, was the coach. So it was a safe U-turn. So now we're going to go to Trafalgar Square instead, like I originally planned to do anyway.
So up in front, to the right hand side, is called Canada House. The ones with all the Canadian flags on. And in front of that is Trafalgar Square. Another one off the Monopoly ball. You only get to see Nelson's column when we go round the bend in a minute. Can't miss it. Great big tall thing. So I'm going to do something in a minute, I'm going to go through some amber lights. Obviously that was too close for me to stop, I do have to keep explaining this to some of my haters that it's too close for me to stop. That one I've already gone through, and that down there is the strand, yet another one off the Monopoly board. Now as we come round here I want you to see this sign here. It says Parliament Square going that way. Well, you can get to it that way, but it's a damn sight quicker going down here. I don't know why they would give you wrong directions in central London when you could go straight down Whitehall here and it's literally right under Big Ben, which is right in front of us. Weird. Now, just a little bit further down this road to the right hand side is where the guardsmen normally are with their horses all done up in their army uniforms and that and they get terrorised by the tourists that are turning up there. Unfortunately none of them are out today. Yeah, just over there to the right hand side is where they would normally be. But they must be having a cup of tea or something. Now as I've said, I'm not a tour guide, I don't know what all these statues are, all these memorials down here. I do know what this one coming up is, it's about women of the war, tribute to the, the amount of women that lost their lives fighting for this country. Right next to Downing Street, yes that Downing Street where they do do a nice bottle of wine and some cheese and biscuits, it's really nice in there apparently. And over here you've probably seen it on telly, on Remembrance Day, you lay your reefs there. coming into Parliament Square which is just over there to the right, the green bit. Westminster Abbey is just over there, that's part of it, it's a huge building. And we've got uh, Parliament on the left hand side. Now again I wanted to go straight on from here and go down the side of Parliament but you're not allowed to go down there before 10 o'clock in the morning. God knows why, why they make everyone go into traffic all the time, not open up the roads in London, I have no idea why they do it. 
Now I would have turned left here, but because I didn't know about that sign up there, which I will show you when we get closer to it, we've got to go round Parliament Square now, which is no big deal, but I would have just turned left here, would have been a bit quicker. But there you go, hey ho. Now you'll see that my exit is uh, blocked at the moment. It's because of bad phasing around here. The, the lights are awful. Obviously you've got people crossing now in front of that bus and no one's got anywhere to go because the bus can't go forward. That cab can't go forward. So I've got to go around it. Everything in London for me traffic wise needs a whole proper look at really does so there's the sign up there to the left hand side not allowed down there why if someone can tell me why I'm not allowed down there at before 10 o'clock it would be really appreciated let us know in the comments so you've got the Westminster Abbey over to the left hand side there you can see a bit more of that now that I have to go around Parliament Square and you get a better view of Big Ben in a minute when we go round. So, every cloud, I guess, has a silver lightning. You'll see here, this is why there's so much bloody traffic around London. There isn't that much traffic, it's just the light phasing. You see how long it's taken me to get here. Now we get a green light here, and how far is it to the next set of traffic lights? Not far and they're about to change on me. I do go through an amber and probably could have stopped. But as I say, I missed that one and get hit by this one. So it's all to do with traffic lights. And obviously, I'm going to state the obvious, but that's Big Ben right in front of us. So yet again, I'm waiting for traffic lights. It isn't that busy traffic wise, believe it or not, for this part of the world. But it's traffic lights that make this a, a standstill all the time. It's absolutely crazy. Now, obviously to our right is Parliament, where all our MPs work. Now, but. The place isn't big enough for everyone to have an office there. So if you turn left at his next set of lights, down there on the left, there's an office block where a lot of the MPs have an office in that block. Now to get to Parliament, there is a tunnel that leads from that block right underneath this road going straight into Parliament. It's not a secret tunnel or anything like that, not like a JFK with Marilyn Monroe, allegedly. This is, if you go and have a tour of Westminster and all that sort of stuff, they take you to this tunnel. So 
So how long has it been for me to go round the roundabout and go over a bridge when there's not a lot of traffic? Crazy. I know I keep going on about it, but it's so stupid. So, over to the left hand side, we have the London Eye. So we're going over Westminster Bridge to the south side of the River Thames. And apparently you're supposed to say it like South London. So we're almost at the end of our tour, but on a parting note, I just want to show you these two cycle lanes either side. They are probably two of the worst cycle lanes I've seen. There's too many tourists. The tourists are doing all the photographs and selfies and everything else. There's people everywhere and they step into these cycle lanes without looking. They're too busy with their cameras taking photographs and it's just so dangerous. Yet again, no forward planning from these people that make these decisions. So I'm going to speed it up now to the very end where we're going to go to a roundabout now. Some of you may remember the film National Lampoon's European Vacation where Clark Griswold couldn't get off of this roundabout. American guy, I don't think he'd seen a roundabout before and he couldn't get off the roundabout. He just kept going round and round and round and he's from day till night on this roundabout. This is the roundabout right here that he couldn't get off. I will leave a link in the description for the film. I can't put it on here, I wish I could, but because of copyright issues, I cannot put it on the end of this video. So I'll leave a link in the description showing you that part of the film. So we're pretty much at the end now. Let us know what you think of the camera. Go and buy the camera. Let us know what you think of my tour guiding skills. Yeah, but be gentle with me. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.